So here we are, the first slide of Bio 201, Anatomy and Physiology. That's uh, one of my former students there. Got a thorn stuck in their foot, getting it out, I think. So I think that's what happened, I don't remember. Sure. So just look at those words, anatomy and physiology, all right? Anatomy is the study of structure. Anatomy asks, what is it? Like that ape sitting there looking at the skull, saying, what the hell is this thing? I'll see if that ape had taken this class, the ape would know. And it, in fact, the ape would know all the different parts on that skull. So how do we know about anatomy? Well, by dissection and by imaging techniques. So we look at all the parts of the body and we name them. Everything in your body has a name, everything, all right? So that's how we can talk to each other about the, the human body. You have to name things in order to be able to talk about them. That's what anatomy does. We're going to cover typical human anatomy. We'll cover some disorders, but most, mostly we leave that to a class called pathophysiology that some of you will take later on. If this class had been held a few hundred years ago, that's what our classroom would look like. That would be me there with a the fresh dead body. All of you would be gathered around going, ooh, ah, uh, and uh, <coughs> a little coronavirus there. Um, and then, you know, as I cut the body up, I'd be feeding the scraps to the dogs. Very exciting. Um, this is a more contemporary, this is an imaging technique. Uh, I usually ask in class if anybody knows what this is, and most people usually get it wrong. This is a PET scan, positron emission tomography. Use radioactive glucose, and what happens is the parts of the brain that are more active will light up brighter. Um, this is used a lot to find brain tumors. It's also used for some functional imaging, used by various quacks who will charge you thousands of dollars and claim they can tell things about your personality. But where you see red, that's the part of the brain that's most active. Yellow is second most, then green, then blue. So look on the top, you see it says normal. This might be where they had a person doing two different things. Like, let's just make up something. Let's say they're reading poetry on the left and they're doing math problems on the right. Now below we look at Parkinson. We'll be talking about that this semester, Parkinson's disease. So look at the brain of the Parkinson's patient. Do the scans look the same? No, they don't. You can see there's a lot less activity. This is one of the ways we can tell what's going on in a disease. Parkinson's disease, we can see, are causing less activity in very specific parts of the brain. That helps us figure out what is Parkinson's disease doing? What's it affecting? And then notice how it says pre and post. That's pre and post what, do you suppose? Pre and post treatment, probably drugs. I don't know the background in this slide, but let's say you've got a Parkinson's drug and you want to see whether or not the drug is effective. So look at the pre and then look at the post. What do you think? Is the drug effective? Yeah, it looks like it's causing a lot more activity to come back. So imaging is an incredibly powerful technique we can look inside of people without cutting them open, which is what dissection was. And here you see, um, these are CT scans. There's Terry's brain on the left and a healthy brain on the right. You might have heard of Terry. That's Terry Schiavo. Terry Schiavo was a woman in her mid-twenties who suffered cardiac arrest. And she lay there for a while before people found her. So they saved her life, but she suffered severe brain damage because when you have a heart attack, cardiac arrest, you're not pumping any blood to your brain and your brain really needs oxygen, otherwise it dies quickly. So look at the image in the lower right, healthy brain. Notice how there are some dark areas in there. Like see how it looks like a couple of parentheses in the top center of that brain that are back to back instead of facing each other. And then you see other black dots going down the middle and then a big kind of bat shaped black dot. Those are called ventricles. The ones on the top are the lateral ventricles and we see the third, uh, the cerebral aqueduct, third uh, ventricle leading down to the fourth ventricle. Ventricles are full of a uh, fluid, basically water, but it's a very special water called cerebrospinal fluid. It supplies the nutrients for your brain. So what happens in the, the healthy brain on the right, all of that gray is actual brain cells. Now what happens is when brain cells die, macrophages come and gobble them up, and then there's empty space. Well, what happens in your brain is that empty space fills in with water. It fills in with CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. So when you look at the brain on the left, um, you can see, see all the big dark 
See how you can kind of see those co those parentheses again? Yeah, all that black is water. So this was a very famous case with Terry Scheibo. She was in a coma for 15 years. And her husband finally said, enough. Let's turn off the machine. i got to get on with my life. And her parents said, oh, no, you don't. That's our daughter. So there are no good guys and bad guys here. You can't blame the husband. You can't blame the parents. They don't want to pull the plug on their own kids. So ended up in the courts. President George W. Bush actually got involved at one point. But they finally showed images like this to the judge involved. And the, the physicians, um, neurologists and so on, were saying, look at the brain on the left. They explained what I just explained to you. They said, she's never coming back. She doesn't have any brain tissue left. So they pulled the plug. So I can see here in medical imaging, yeah, in this case actually determined a life or death decision. Here are other forms of imaging. You see the old-fashioned x-ray, a radiograph, cerebral angiogram, they inject dye into a blood vessel, CT scan, there's a PET scan again, there's an MRI. So they have various, they cost different amounts and they're useful for different amounts uh, for different purposes. So lots of imaging techniques. That's been a huge advancement in the history of medicine. So I said before that we will cover normal anatomy in this class. There are lots of variations. So here on the top you see normal arrangement of kidneys on the left. You have two kidneys that are kind of back. Uh, in, in boxing it's illegal to hit people there. You can't punch people in the kidneys. But notice that on the right the pelvic kidney, there's here someone's kidney is located way down in their pelvic region. And then at the top on the right you see a horseshoe kidney, one giant kidney instead of two. Um, these aren't common, but they're, they're well-known variations, and these people normally function perfectly well. So we're studying mostly the one on the left. The things on the right you'll mostly get in a later class. Same thing we see on the bottom. You see the normal arrangement of arteries coming off of the aorta, and on the bottom right you can see variations. This happens from time to time. They go in to do an operation, they realize somebody's anatomy is a little bit different. So we're going to study typical, and what do I mean by typical? I mean you know, statistical. What does most of the population have? That's what we're going to study. We'll look at a few abnormalities, but again, most of those we're going to save for your pathophysiology class. So we talked about anatomy. What's left? Physiology. Here we go. Physiology is a study of function. Physiology asks, how does it work? So anatomy says, what is this thing? Physiology says, what does it do? How does it work? You know, now that we know the name of it, let's find out what it does and how it works, okay? Once again, we're going to cover mostly normal, typical physiology, but we'll cover some diseases and disorders. Anatomy is mostly just memorization of names. Physiology is actually understanding of processes. Anatomy is generally the much easier part of the class. Physiology is what people tend to struggle with a little more. So on the right you see the graph there of an action potential, that's a nerve impulse. We'll, we'll know all about that later this semester. You'll be able to label all those parts and tell me exactly what each one is. And then the, below it we see an ion channel. This is an ion channel that uh, lets anions through but will not let cations through. And then on the right we see this is muscle physiology. We're looking at the uh, actin and myosin filaments, the troponin tropomyosin complex, we're looking at how calcium allows the myosin head to bind to the myosin binding site on the actin filament, and then we burn an ATP, that creates the power stroke. That's physiology. So anatomy, whoa, watch where that thing lands, we'll probably need it. Now see if this, if that were a real thing, which it's not, you wouldn't have to say that thing. It would have its own name. It would be the Globotendauber or something, whatever. He would say, watch where the Globotendauber goes. And physiology, whoa, that was a good one. Try it, Hobbs. Just poke his brain right where my finger is. And the doctor is poking the guy's brain and his right foot is shooting up off the table. Do you think that's possible? It actually kind of is. And by the end of the semester, you will be able to tell me exactly which part of the brain has just been poked in order to make that guy's right leg fly up off the table. So that's the basics of what anatomy and physiology are. Let's then talk about the levels of organization in the human body. 
In anatomy and physiology, we constantly have to move back and forth between talking about different levels of organization. So at the top level, we have the organism. And that's not orgasm. Don't put that down. I'll mark that wrong. That's a different kind of a thing. Organism is the whole person, the whole entity. That's you. You are an organism. You are made up of organ systems. Organ systems are things like the cardiovascular system, the digestive system, the nervous system, the muscular system, the lymphatic system. Do you know how many systems there are? That's something you'll know very soon. You'll have to be able to tell me what each one does as well. Organ systems are made up of organs, individual organs, the heart, the stomach, the liver, the pancreas, the gallbladder, the small intestine, large intestine, the brain, and so on, all right? Those are organs. Organs are made up of tissues. Tissues, remember from Bio 156, are just groups of the same kind of cell functioning together. So we have muscle tissue, brain tissue, liver tissue, and so on. Tissues are in turn made of cells, and cells are made up of individual molecular and chemical elements, the molecules and the chemicals. Now, why do I go to the trouble to point this out? This might seem kind of like a throwaway slide. It's more important than you think. One of the things that sometimes trips people up in this class is we constantly have to move back and forth between the two levels. So I'll be talking about brain tissue at one point, and I'll be talking about a neuron immediately afterwards, and then I'll be talking about ions. So this is why you took Bio 156 ahead of time, so that you'd be familiar with the background so that we can jump back and forth as we need to between all these different levels. And uh, recording these PowerPoints is not the most exciting thing in the world for me, so I reward myself at the end of each one by having a picture of where I'm going to go this summer after I get rid of you. Um, I go every summer I spend a month camping in northern Arizona and southern Utah and I go to places like this. I'm standing on top of a place called Muley Point looking down on the goosenecks of the San Juan River and in the distance that's Monument Valley, the Navajo Nation's tribal monument. Okay peeps, I'll see you again in the next annotated video.